depressed. Yeah. Okay, so we're back. We got rid of Elena. We continue our reality series with the Blood Doc, and we already got a little bit. Of, we got a little bit of info already, so let's just kind of go through this. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been to the lab, we got the results, we came back, we're here about seven, eight days later, nine days later, and uh, you know, you already told me I'm like a chick, hormonal level, uh, so Lehana, sorry to tell you that, but. Well, your current levels, and you know, tell Lee, I don't know of anything you've done ever, how you trained, anything, all I know is what I see right in front of me here, and the, for instance, the testosterone range is 350 to 1,030. So it's it's a big range, you know, 300 to 1,000 general, and you're at 75. So here's the range, and you're way down here. You're really low. Now, this, you told me what happened, and this is a common scenario where people, uh, as they get in their later 30s, early 40s, They'll go get all these levels checked, and if they're low in growth hormone or testosterone, they'll get testosterone cream, and that's the big trend now with right. anti-aging, is people get testosterone cream. And you were not in range, I don't know what your range was, and you started taking a little bit of testosterone cream to get yourself in the normal range, so your testosterone wouldn't be so low. But then I had you fast for a day, before we did the blood test and it comes back and your level is 75 so you're extremely low right you know you're not running a when these guys are doing things and get tagged they might bring their testosterone level of 1500 or 2000 something really high out of range and you're just you're just way low really really low so the testosterone could have been beat down from many other things my approach is a little bit different because Athletes are not supposed to take testosterone if they're competing. Now, they do get medical waivers. You know, I heard where half the guys in Tour de France took medical right. waiver testosterone because their testosterone levels were low. So when people come to me, I'm saying, okay, what caused the testosterone to get low in the first place? And then let's try to figure that out. Right. So we correlate all this blood work to figure this out. So then we look at your progesterone, which is in a normal range. Your DHEA, the, the range here is, is uh, 88 to 305, and you are 187. So you're mid-range there, but we want that up. Up a little bit more. Uh, yeah, we want that up. And your pregnenolone is low. Okay, so the range is 20 to 150, and you're 47. You're in the lower... You're in the lower part of that range. What, now, what is that? Now, I'm going to pull up on my hormone chart again here. Okay. Cholesterol goes to pregnenolone, goes to DHEA, goes to testosterone. So if you're low in these things, you're not putting the building blocks in. Are you following me? Yep. So we're going to take, we're going to make sure you are like right on the low border of cholesterol. You are on the low border of pregnenolone, and you're in mid-range here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you need to focus more on the paleo diet a little bit, um, get more of your mm -hmm. calories from from uh, fats. Good, you, you know. Good fats. Good fats. You wanna, you wanna focus on meats and vegetables, you know, and you're gonna get more cholesterol. And then we're, I'm telling you to take those max CFAs, which are omega threes. And then we're going to take a, just a small amount of pregnenolone and DHEA to provide building blocks. What kind of DHEA out there? Because what would I've, you know, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the supplement world. Yeah, I no. hear that there's stuff that's kind of not really, you know, the stuff you maybe buy at Costco might not be kind of pharmaceutical grade. You might not be getting that much DHEA in it. Yeah, well, I don't tell people to go get that stuff because it's really, it's typically low, very, very okay. low yeah, grade. Yeah, what you're getting, right? Yeah, and I'm telling you to get pharmaceutical grade. So um, we're using with the company with pharmaceutical license, so you're getting what it says. But yeah, and then there's different forms of DHEA. And see, if you take a certain form, it's just going to stay and it's not going to convert, which is big to bring your DHEA level up. But we want all this to convert to testosterone. Right. So we're going to do this. And what we don't want is it to convert to estrogen. 
See, because on our chart here, when we look at estrogen, you are actually in the upper range of estrogen. If, if we look at the, the range here, you know, your testosterone is down here, your pregnenolone is here, your DHEA is here, but your estrogen is up here. So we can take estrogen blockers, and this is one of the reasons we formulated the green drink that way, because broccoli has things in it that block estrogens, block bad estrogens. Very, very important. And the sprouts of the broccoli are about a thousand percent stronger than the flowerettes. So that green drink that we have is very good for athletes because it has broccoli sprouts in it that it is a natural estrogen blocker. So when you take this after training, we're building your buffer athletically to buffer acids, but we're also blocking estrogen. So taking that green drink for you after you train has multiple benefits. Got it. Okay. Is it just this personal note, is, this, is, is uh, wheatgrass similar to broccoli? Um, no. Okay. It, it has a lot of very good things in wheatgrass, very good things, but the big potent anti-estrogens um, anti, uh, estrogen are in broccoli. Okay, cool. All your cruciferous vegetables have these, and you get indoles and I'm not going to go in super deep on that because we right. can talk forever. So I go back to this, and I know you're taking the, the uh, testosterone cream, but you're low. So we're going to look and say, okay, what's causing this to be so low in the first place? So I come back here, and we talked about cholesterol. Your, your uh, triglycerides are high, which taking the max EFAs, which are the fish oils, and they got protective the gamma form of vitamin E to protect oxidation. That'll help lower triglycerides and help with this good cholesterol. You need to eat more also. Your diet needs to be bigger. You know, what would help you for the next few days if you ate a bunch of steak and eggs and took the adrenal glandular, which I'll get in that, and you'll have a hormone boost right away because you're putting a bunch of cholesterol and then you're putting a glandular in there. So the other thing with triglycerides, significant is carbs, grain, carbs from grains, processed grains and sugar. Okay, those will bring the triglyceride level up. Right. Then we come down here and we look. Uh, creatinine is commonly a little bit elevated out of range when people exercise hard. And this is nothing to be, but we look at then potassium and, uh, and uh, your adrenals pump potassium into the cells without getting this too much, but this is another indicator of adrenal glands that are a little bit worn down. Wow. Okay? So, we would use the adrenal glandular on this from overtraining. And this is what happens when you overtrain. we got to get that down in the range. Now, you have a lot of digestion issues that need to be fixed. And we look first, I look at three indicators here that all have to do with digestion, and we're going to tie this in to some of your symptoms, which is common. <clears throat> Chloride, necessary to make hydrochloric acid. The chloric comes from chloride. So your stomach acid, or oh, stomach over here, <laughs> pointing to the liver over here, <laughs> your stomach makes hydrochloric acid to break down your food so it lowers the pH in your stomach. So if we're low on chloride, all right, we, or again, we go back to the building blocks. You're not having the building blocks necessary to make it. And then I come down here and look at your total protein and the level is off. It's not being broke down properly because your stomach, the likely cause of this is your stomach pH is not dropping enough from decreased hydrochloric acid. So you're not producing stomach acid, which is causing this. And then we look at total globulin, same thing. The, the medical term for this is hypochlorhydria. It's low stomach acid, not breaking your foods down. Now this, is, this ties in real close to a lot of things. When you overtrain, you sweat this stuff out. Right. And you don't replace the minerals, okay? So one way to do this is when you take that shake, you get a little fourth of a, a teaspoon of sea salt. It can't be regular salt because regular salt is just sodium chloride. Sea salt has the whole array. You want unrefined sea salt? 
you take some of that and put it in there and it'll help you start using sea salt a lot in your cooking because you're sweating this stuff out and you're low you need to put it back okay okay that's a very